morning everyone and it's very dark it's half seven and it is a bit dark actually no, so where our flat is it does get very dark oh god i mean yeah it's been ages hasn't it oh i haven't spoken to you since before christmas we've got lots to catch up on mostly this one and what a big boy he is look at him holding his own bottle he is five and a half months old now how did that happen and where did that time go i would just vlog today just to do a little just for today just to catch up um and let you know you know how things have been going i completely lost the ability to do this okay right here we are okay shall we say hello there you are my sweet one someone's got a little tooth i don't know if we're going to be able to see it because it's like down there and every time i pull his like try and pull his lip down to see it he goes oh look at his little side party he's got a little cow lick my like mummy unfortunately apologies i've given you quite possibly the worst hairline feature that one could have he is just the best thing ever look at the back of his head where he's rubbed his hair off oh bless you where he's rubbed his little hair oh bless you He's rubbed his little hair off here. He's going to get a little mullet, isn't he? He's going to get a little bald patch. Look at that little neck. <laughs> oh, God. Why are you so cute? You're so cute. This is basically what I do all day. Just look at him and like tell him how gorgeous he is. Okay, let's put you in your baby Bjorn. And then we can... Mummy can make up a tea and we can catch up a bit more properly. Hold on. Oh, I'll just turn this off. Look at that little hand. <laughs> Daddy's, oh, excuse me. Daddy's still in bed. We're still tag teaming the old night shifts. Gabe is now in his big cot, which I'll show you a bit later when we go into the bedroom. It came on Tuesday, it's now Saturday. I should probably talk to you after the kettle's boiled, actually. And I was actually extra chuffed because when I ordered it, the price was 160 pounds. We've gone for a cot bed, so it will take him up to the age of four. Um, the price was 160 so I was like, well, I'm going to go for it. And then, no joke, about four days later, uh, no, maybe it was more than that, a couple of weeks later, I was looking at the delivery update and I looked at the, like, clicked on the product page and it had gone up to £200. I have no idea why, there was no explanation, but I was like, thank God I ordered it when I did, because £200. But it is a very nice copy, so I probably would have paid that, because... That's just kind of how much cots are. Um, I did look at mothers and puppies, they do some very nice ones, but four to six hundred pounds. Mm, not not something I could justify, I'm afraid. Got that on Tuesday and he's gone in that and he's been no problem. Um, I kind of knew it was a transition, but I just didn't really think about it. And then when I was speaking to friends and like my mum and stuff, and they're like, oh my God, did he sleep in it? No problem. Uh, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I just sort of didn't really give him a choice. Um, but it was getting to the point where he was in his snooze pod and I just felt like he wanted extra space. So I feel like he was happy to be in a bigger cot and it wasn't such a like big transition for him because he was just ready to be in a big cot anyway. You right, my love? Um, yeah, I feel like he was ready to be in a big cot anyway. So he just appreciates the space. He loves just putting his arms like wide straight out, don't you? So that's the biggest thing. We're now in the big cot, like a big boy. Um, we've not really been doing a whole lot else. I noticed the other day um, that he has got his first tooth coming through. I was on the phone to my dad and my stepmom and they said, um, has he got any teeth? And I was like, I don't think so. I do keep looking at his gums. And my stepmom was like, oh, put your, th put your finger in like that. Um, and let him just like chew on it. Um, so obviously I washed my hands and did that. And then I felt something really hard, a couple of, like, I think his teeth are coming through like top and bottom. Um, because yeah, when he bit down, it was like, Jesus Christ. Um, but I felt one particular bit that was hard. And I was like, oh my God. And then I looked in, like properly looked and I could see a tiny little bit just piercing through. I think it was just cutting. I think that's what you say, cut, cut through. Um, I'm not very good at mum terminology, so I don't really know what the, how the best way to describe it is, but I think it's, I think that's the term. And then since I've discovered it then, every day I've looked at it and it's just come through a bit more. And I actually felt a bit emotional discovering he had a tooth because it was like, oh my God. I know he's not going to be a baby forever, but it's like, he's definitely not a newborn anymore. And he's like a proper baby now. And every day he just 
looks more and more like a proper little boy. Uh, we've just ordered some six to nine month sleep suits and vests because he's going up in those. It, it really is, when you have a baby, time just go, like you just are like, where has the time gone? I think with this last year, everyone's a bit like that because what have we got to show for this amount of time? I was really like down about the fact that it's definitely at the, it, like in January as well and like New Year, I was really struggling and down about the fact that he was going to be six months and like half his, he's almost a year and half of that has been spent doing absolutely fuck all. Actually that's not true because he was born in August and so we did have a little, a, you know, we did get to have some kind of normality when he was first here but since he's becoming more alert and wanting to do more things, we obviously aren't able to do anything and he always loved seeing people and getting hugged by different people and I just hope that he doesn't lose that. I don't think he will. I feel like he's quite a social baby. Little Han is awake from his first nap. So we're gonna go in and see him. He sounds very happy. Hello my gorgeous baby. This is my gorgeous boy. But while we're here, I'll show you the cot. So this is it. It's a bit squidged in because this room isn't that like we haven't done like a proper nursery. This is our spare room. So we still have a double bed in here. We've had to move things around a bit, but we wanted to keep the double bed for when people come and stay. And also other mum friends of mine have said that when they're young, if they were like, just like, oh, if we'd been able to have a bed in his bedroom, in our baby's bedroom, um, it just would have made such a difference because the nights when you're in and out, you can just sleep in here, so. Um, yeah, but anyway, this is the cot. It's from John Lewis. It's called the Rachel Cot Bed, I think. So yeah, here he is. Are you loving it, Gabe? Do you love your new cot? This blue thing here, I've just tucked it over the mattress. Um, I had that in his snooze pod, again, around the mattress to make it a bit cosier when it was cold. So with the transition, I put it into here as well, and I think maybe that's helped. We got a spring mattress just because they last a bit longer and they're a bit better quality, I think. One other thing, actually, just while we're in here, um, again, just ignore this table here. Um, these are clothes that need to be packed away because he's growing out of them. Anyway, um, actually, I'll turn this off. So, I just want to talk about this thing, which is called a hatch. You see, this is very makeshift. We've had to, like, stack a load of books up for the baby monitor so that it can look at him because I guess I need to get, like, a stand or something. Anyway, this thing is called a hatch and it's basically a nightlight and a noise machine and I am so impressed with it. We started using white noise with him and I don't know that it helps him sleep massively more than anything else, but it was mainly to try and help him sleep but to block out any sudden noises and that's been what it's been great for um, we live on quite a quiet road but there, it's opposite a big Sainsbury so it can sometimes be quite noisy there's also like a loading bay directly outside his window and um, so sometimes deliveries come or people just pull up out there and have leave their engines running at night when it's quiet do you know what I mean like having the white noise on just ensures that once he's asleep he will just wake up for another reason and it's not just because there's been a sudden noise um but yeah this is also a night light as well so it doesn't just play white noise it plays lullabies water noises bird song so it's a it, it it's kind of advertised for babies but it's also advertised just for people with disturbed sleep um and you can set it to have some of your favorites and i've just really really been impressed with it because i wanted a night light i was then recommended this I thought, well, I may as well spend, the night I was going to get was £30, this is 60 and I thought I may as well spend the extra 30 to have the noise on it as an option. And as soon as I got it, um, I put the lullabies on when we were getting him ready to go to bed and he was being a bit fractious and as soon as the lullabies went on, he instantly calmed down and I just feel like it's really helped with that bed or nap routine. We put the lullabies on, in the day we read a story then have a hug and put the white noise on. At night we put the lullabies on, have his milk, have a hug and then put the white noise on. And I just feel like being able to have those lullabies playing whilst we're winding down rather than just silence just signals to him that we're, you know, calming down for a nap. Um, and it's really nifty because you just touch this 
so that's the white noise that was just on touch it again so i've programmed it to have my favorite so you can have different colored light we have this kind of orangey one but there's green blue yellow uh purple just and you can set that to be all different lights anyway so we have the night light which is the first one that comes on so in the middle of the night if you need a light on you just tap it then you tap it again and it's this light with lullabies don't know if you can hear that So that's the lullaby and then you tap it again and the light goes off and it goes to the white noise and then you just keep your finger on it and there we go you turn it off there's an app on your phone as well that you can control it from so if i'm in bed um, and i want to turn the volume up or down or put a light on i can just do it from bed i don't have to get up so yeah it's just something i would really recommend for babies but also if you just have trouble sleeping and you need some bird song or some water sounds or anything like that i just it's been one of the best buys I think that I've got um, since having him and I will just recommend it so much um, because it's something we'll have forever now. This will be his nightlight in his bedroom and take him through his being a toddler. Um, so whether we use the noise or not all the time, we will always use the nightlight. So, Mummy's going to stop talking now and actually get you up. <laughs> My sweet boy. <gasps> there we go. Oh! Gorgeous baby. So you'll notice he's still in the sleep suit. For his first nap, I generally keep it. Oh, did you just burp? I generally keep him in his sleep suit because Daddy, um, all of Gabe's clothes are in our bedroom. Daddy tends to still be asleep when we wake up and go down for our first nap. So I just keep him in his sleep suit for his first nap, and then we get dressed after we have this bottle. But then, to be honest, we don't actually really need to get dressed, do we? Because we're not doing anything. I have been trying to, well, I've been starting to feel like I could get back into some kind of fitness. And I try and do yoga every day, but it's like specifically for my core. Um, once you've had a baby, it's very important to be careful once you start exercising um, around your core and to do specific kind of core exercises. And it doesn't really feel like you're doing very much, but it's so important to try and get your core back um, because it's obviously like spread out from having this big bump um, so you have to be quite careful so I actually have um, this app called glow that I've been using and I feel like it's really really good for postpartum yoga I try to just find stuff on YouTube but I, I just feel like on YouTube they can be a bit hit and miss with yoga workouts for postpartum because sometimes they say postpartum but then they still do like cat cow as like normal. So cat cow is like when you arch your back and then you bring your back round. And postpartum you shouldn't really be arching your back. You should just be having it at tabletop and then going into cow, rounding your back. You shouldn't be really arching it or doing anything that's like really open basically like wheel pose and things like that. So um, yeah, I just find that you need to be a bit careful with YouTube. So. I was looking for yoga specific apps, obviously everything's online now in, in the form of an app and I just came across this glow one and I feel like postpartum specifically it's just really really good So and you can do like a search of like what it is that you want and it's got yoga and pilates on it um, and you can, I've just favourited uh, my postpartum ones and so you can see there's quite a lot of option um, and I just feel like it's just really good because I, as I say, like with the YouTube ones um, I don't always know if they're really actually that good for postpartum um, but all the ones I've done on this Glow app seem to kind of know their stuff when it comes to um, how you should be doing yoga when you've just had a baby just five months but when you've had a baby um, because really what you're concentrating on is trying to like knit your abs <laughs> your stomach muscles back in together which is why you don't want to be doing anything that pushes them out um, and I find that all of the yoga workouts really focus on that. So I, I try and do that every day. Also, just wanted to chat a throwback. I bought some stuff from Glossier recently. Um, so I've been sudden, I've been finding time now to start looking after myself properly. <laughs> um, and so I've been really into doing my skincare. Um, and I suddenly thought I would actually quite like to find something. I can't imagine wearing like a full face of makeup like I used to. And I didn't really have any lightweight stuff. Um, and I remembered I really love the Glossier concealer. And I thought, let me try their skin tint again. Anyway, the point of the story is that their customer service is amazing. I haven't ordered them for them from ages. 
I haven't ordered from them for ages. I've got a sample of the Future Dew to give a go. Um, but yeah, I ordered their skin tint and concealer, like you can get it in a pack, so it's slightly cheaper. And anyway, it's a bit, they do so many more colours than when I last had it. And when I last had it, it was when they only had about four shades. So it's a bit of a gamble. So the first shade I went to was G10, which is this shade. And I feel like when I got it, I haven't, I have, have I tried it? Yes. When I got it, I looked at it and I thought, I feel like that's going to be a bit too dark. Not dark, but a bit too warm for me. That's the concealer. Um... And yeah, I just thought, I think that's going to be too warm. Anyway, so I got in contact with them and said, I think I picked the wrong shade. And I didn't open it, but I was like, can I exchange it? They said, yes, what shade were you after? So I went for G11. Anyway, they said, that's fine. We've gone ahead and got that ordered for you. Don't worry about returning the other shade. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, so I now have two shades, which I actually think is for the best. Because now this G11, I'm not sure if it's a bit too light. Anyway, um, so that's G11. And then this is G12. Ooh. You can tell I haven't done this for ages. And this is G12. So you can see, no, G10, sorry. Yeah, G11, G10. G10 is the darker one, but I think you can see how much warmer the G10 looks. I am much more yellow undertoned than I am kind of neutral or pink. So I just feel like the undertone is wrong for G10, whereas G11, I think might be a better bet. So anyway, I just thought when if ever I do venture back into the big bad world, and then that's the concealer, much better colour for me. Um, yeah, if ever I do venture back into the big bad world, I just want something that I could put over my skin that's really, really light, um, but just something. So yeah, I thought I'm gonna go ahead and give the skin tint a go again. Um, so I can't bother to put it on right now, but I am going to give that a go and see. Actually, maybe I will do it now. Should we go into my bathroom and do it? But let's give this G11 a go, see what happens. I can't bother to go and get a brush. Um, oh yeah, I think that's a much better match already. Yeah, I just wanted something that would not necessarily give me loads of coverage, but it's easy to apply like this because honestly, I thinking about the way I used to do my makeup and having the time or inclination to want to do that now, I just don't know when that's ever gonna happen. So yeah, I'm definitely peak mum in that this is now gonna be my makeup routine, just something I can just smush all over with my hands. Um, and this is very smushable. <laughs> oh my God, that has rubbed in so nicely. Makeup routine done. I mean, obviously I need to actually put, I need to put actual makeup on, but that's exactly what I wanted. Look at my bags though. It's really accentuated those, hasn't it? But yeah, just something to kind of give me a bit more of a uniform looking skin, I suppose. I don't want it to be co to completely cover things up. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. And then I'll just add a bit of colour. Let's maybe put some concealer on. Oh, I love the stretch concealer so much. Because it's again really easy to put on without a brush and it's quite emollient so it's hydrating oh look at that <laughs> such a difference already it says on the site that because they have all these new shades now that the concealer that goes with the shade should match and i actually, i do think that's true unless you want that super bright under eye which i don't know if is particularly in vogue anymore everyone used to love that fucking didn't they do you know what i mean when i do that that, that's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, oh my God, great. That's gone really dark. God, it's gloomy today. My battery's running out, great. Okay, I just thought I'd include that because, yeah, I mean, what a throwback glossier, but nostalgic. Um, and a great customer experience. I mean, I just couldn't believe that they were so kind as to be like, just keep the other shade. Because I fully intended to send it back. Um, and I feel like maybe that slightly darker one will be better when it does start getting warmer anyway. So I'm very happy about that. I also ordered a new balm.com because it's my fave. I will also pop a Glossier link in the description box purely because if you shop through it, you can get 10% off. So you're welcome. But I mean, just in case you felt like, actually, I've not bought off Glossier for ages either. Um, yeah, it was a very good customer experience. And they literally got back to me. I emailed them and they got back to me in about 10 minutes. Um, so good. Hello everybody. Uh, happy Sunday. It's Sunday today and the day this vlog is going up. 
I meant to vlog much more as I always do, but as you might have noticed, I've got a little situation going on with this eye. Um, I have a sty, which I've had for about three days now, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better, um, but it, it, it's kind of coming to a head, <laughs> which I know is gross. So this has stopped me from doing anything um, this week because it's just very irritating and sore and painful. It's actually much better now, but it's just quite itchy and annoying. So yes, I meant to put, um, it's actually quite a long vlog already, but I did mean to put more interesting things. Um, but I thought I'd still put it up purely because I just wanted, I miss you guys and I just wanted to, to say hi. I am planning to hopefully vlog this week as well. So fingers crossed there might be a few for you over the next few weeks. I'm not sure, I can't guarantee. I'm really just coming in to end this vlog. Say thank you guys for watching. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Mwah.